Okay, welcome to Truth Right Back. All right, we are live. It is... What time is it here? 9.54 West Coast, 9.54 p.m. Pray you're doing well. We're going to be finishing another book tonight, First Kings chapter... Well, First Kings we'll be finishing. We'll be in chapter 22 tonight. And then immediately after, we'll be starting in 2 Kings. A little controversy tonight as we close out 1 Kings. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Mr. S'mores is in the house. Peter's in the house. Greasy's in the house. What? It's a party, I think, because they knew we were going to finish another book. How many books in the Bible? Type the number if you know. Type it in the chat. How many books in the Bible? Don't cheat. You should know this by now. Anyhow, this year, well, that's kind of a trick question because this year we're going to, on Truth Right Back, we will be reading uh, not only the the canonized uh, books in the Bible, but we'll, we'll be reading the Apocrypha. <clears throat> so that'll be in August in the Apocrypha. All right, so and that's an extra 15 books total. I said this 14, 14. I take that back, 14. 14 books total. Anyhow, let's get right into it. I'm looking forward to tonight's reading. Hold on. Did you guys know how many books? Nobody put it in the chat 66. yet. 66. How'd she know that, Peter? How does she know that, Peter? I hope I'm right. Am I right? She's an educated person. Peter, how did she know that? She's Jordan. very educated. You're a sharp cookie, uh, Dorothy. I hope so, Omar. <laughs> Dorothy. Mr. S'mores in the house. There he oh, is. Oh, man, you found another, another right. vision? Mr. S'mores. Oh, man. All right. I gave the, ask somebody else the trivia, and I won't say a word. Let me see. Okay, well, if we have 66, and you were right. You're absolutely right, Miss uh Yeah, but you can do Ms. it again. Greasy. 66 and then there's 14 in their apocrypha but i think hmm, hold on why did i think 15 peter are there 14 or 15 books in the apocrypha let me look hold on, hold on. i bet you can't spell that i know i can't t-h-a-t so so there's here let's just let's just look at it there's uh let me see you've got uh Ah, I see. I see what's going on here. You got the book of Tobit, Judith. That's my my sister. The editions of Esther, the wisdom of Solomon. That's four. Sirach five. Baruch six. Letter of Jeremiah seven. Oh heck! I think somebody's at my door. Hold on a second. Oh, there's a few. There. There's there's a few. Hang on. Hold on. Dorothy. Oh. Dorothy. <laughs> Who? Dorothy. Really? Who? Dorothy. Who? Dorothy. Can you spell that? D-O-R-O-T-H-Y. You spell it right. Oh, man. Mr. Wow. Smoke is in the house. Dorothy. There's a party tonight. Hey, you caught me when I was dancing. That, that happens after he ate his blueberry pie. No grape nuts, Peter. Peter, you got to put a rake on it. <laughs> Where's the leash? <laughs> what? What? Peter, can... So anyhow, um, that comes with a leash. So tonight, That's your Gibbons, we've got a little bit of controversy in tonight's reading. You know, there's always, I, I love controversy. Did you lock everybody out? Because downtown Judy Brown's the only one that's showing. No, hold on. Let me see who's here. I got. I just got off the phone with Ricky, Ricky Tiki a while ago. You should be on. Let's see who's on. Judy, yeah, where is everybody? Are we Are we early? No. Hold on. So. Okay, I just want to ask you one question, Omar, since no, it's just us in the studio and Judy. Yeah. Hello. Um. If what was that? Uh, Ahab was not a good king, 
right? It was one of the worst. Horrible, horrible king. But in the last chapters, oh gosh, you know that we were reading, I think it was chapter 20. Yeah. And then basically you were saying that um, the prophet told him because he didn't obey God that he was going to have to go in that man's place. And so was the people that he, his people would have to go in the place of those people. So what happened to that? Because, you know, he, he was, he redeemed himself at the last. Um, I guess he felt bad what Jezebel did and God kind of showed him mercy. So whatever happened to that other part is my question. Uh, Ahab's got a little bit of an issue. He's got a short term memory. He says sorry for a little bit, and then he messes up again. God has given him many times to get right. It sounded like he's trying to get right that last chapter, but tonight you'll you'll see again. He'll drop the ball, and he die. I think he dies. Yeah, he'll die tonight. I think it ends for uh, the first kings ends with him dying. Oh, bad dude. Yeah, the bad guy. I, Why I is he so bad again? Because he was worshiping the idols, or what? Um, the Bible says that he was more wicked than all the kings before him. Now, if you remember the list, we have a little cheat sheet here. Let's see if we have it here. One second. Little yeah, I'd like you to sheet. send me that list, Omar. Here, Peter, remember we were looking at this? One second. Ah, there it is. Dorothy. Are you kidding? Do Dorothy. Okay, you ready? Who's, so on, check who's, who's at the door now? Judy Brown's in the house, guys. Oh, where's somebody's Judy? at my door. Hold on a second again. Judy, where's Judy, where's everybody else? Who's there? Omar, Omar, Omar. Who? Oh. <laughs> Mr. S'mores. Omar, Omar, Omar. Who? O-M-A-R, Omar. Who? Mr. S'mores is in the house. Omar. Wait a second. Omar, 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 Omar. I didn't know a horse could sing. He's a backup singer. <laughs> Which one are you, Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Oh, that guy was good. Peter, what's for dinner tonight, Pete? Who? What'd you make, Pete? We have uh, stuffed. Really? With extra whipped cream? Yeah. What'd you make, Pete? No, um, Dorothy did. What? What'd she make? Stuffed bell pepper. Oh, no, nice! So you didn't have you didn't have to. Peter didn't have to cook tonight. No, <laughs> very nice, Pete. Well, Peter very makes very nice. Makes I I'm so happy that uh, Peter makes you're, reservations. You're, you're well. yeah. Peter's well fed tonight. Well, that's Peter that's a makes good thing. For, See, that's where the dinner went north. <laughs> went north. Oh went, man, well, dinner Peter... went to the north. The north wind, baby. It's probably Very on nice. top of the auxiliary office. That's where dinner sat. No, I you know, told Peter, not to play with those electrical sockets, but you know, that's where they are. <laughs> no, what what happens, s'mores? Um, there are there are people on tonight, but there's an issue. There's been some issues with uh, with. There's, Twi uh, with, with Facebook or what? What is it called? Uh, YouTube. There's been issues with uh, with YouTube. She says, Judy says, I have no idea, but I only got the Facebook notification. Yeah, Judy. There's uh, right now. We've got people on X watching us on X. Let me got, check or, or Twitter. We got people on Truth Right Back, and we have people on um, on my my personal uh, Facebook. So so oh. we do have people on. So it's, it's, I, but I don't know what's going on with YouTube. It's been acting weird lately. Okay, I just texted him. I asked him if he's on. Mm -hmm. All right, Bright. Well, why don't why don't we pray? We've got only three chapters. What what is our um what are our chapters look like tonight, Mark? The last one. The oh, last Omar, one. Omar, should you should you make available the uh, the Facebook notification and, and people can no uh, because that that's just it's a very small number of people that see that. I mean, I don't have a lot of friends on Facebook. I mean, I do, but not a lot. Just a few people. Fifty-three like, verses in this in the last chapter. Fifty-three, okay. Fifty-three. And then how about uh, Second Kings one and two? Uh, you want me to get into that one? Let's yes, see. please. One. 
One has uh, 18. Okay. And two has 25. All right. Well, Bride, why don't we uh, why don't we crack it open? Let's do it. Let the games begin. We, well, we're going to finish another book tonight, so that's exciting. Yeah, Mark, I've been got... learning a lot, Omar. Thank you, and Mark and Peter, all of you guys. Dorothy, I'm impressed. Uh, I mean, you're you're very keen, and you've got a lot of uh, you've got a lot of great questions too. I love that. So I did double check. I, I thought so. Fifteen books is what I have in the Apocrypha. Esdras, which is technically one book, but it's first and second Esdras. Tobit, Judith, like my sister, uh, the additional books of Esther, or the, it's actually just a, a, an extra chapter of Esther, the wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, not Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, the book of Baruch, the letter of Jeremiah. Here, why don't I just show you guys? How are they, how are they reading? Uh, Susanna, Bell and the Dragon, Prayer of Manasseh, and First and Second Maccabees. How are they read? I mean, how are they written, though? Like the, like the uh, Geneva? Oh yeah, it's going to be on screen. I'll have them. I'll have them. No, exactly. but I'm saying, is is it written like the Geneva, or is it written uh, like uh, the James or, or ESV? Hold on, you're talking about the. Yeah, can the, I read the, it, or do we have to, you know? Oh, I don't. I don't think you have. Does your Bible have the apocrypha? I don't think. I can. So I can look, but I mean, mm -hmm. is it like the? Is it like the Geneva or no? Crypto Rob. It's, go it, it's going. It's going to be Crypto Rob. Yep. Hey. It's going to be pretty much, yeah, in the Geneva. It's in the Geneva Bible. Oh, okay. So here, I'll show you guys. I'll look if it's on my program. Hold on one second. Uh, won't say good how are we going to get, how are we going to get those books and the rest of the Bible in one year? Oh, no, it'll, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. We've got a, we've got a plan. We have got a plan. All right, hold on. Have you ever thought about the Sefer Bible, Omar? What? Tell me about that one. I don't know enough about it. I just know it's an Aramaic and what is it? Uh, is it Greek? I'm not sure. And ne King James or something? Never heard about it in my life. Well, Kimberly Giovanni Giovanelli was talking about it. And is she it the, had the, one. the Cypher Bible or what is it called? Yeah, that one. Cypher. Oh, yeah, yeah. People talk about that. Yeah. What do you think about it? Do you know? I, I, I don't know anything about it. Oh, Peter, check it out. You see the books of the Apocrypha? Apocrypha. Yeah. So there it is. Those are the ones. That's, we'll be reading all that. I don't know if that's the, the same order we'll read it in. So before we get to that, uh, you guys need, should, should probably get your hands on one. I'll send a link out before beforehand. So if you need to order a Bible with an Apocrypha in it, I can... And the Apocrypha is what? It's the extra books in the Bible that weren't officially canonized. From the top ring, Omar. And why is that? Uh, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But we'll I, want to, I don't know anything about it. you got to explain that, this a little that's a great, bit more. It's a great question. It's All a I great can tell question. you is rain's in the house. No, yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah, he just flew in, I'm telling you. Peter, uh, so I guess uh, we, we it's, it's going to be a great night. Mr. Rain's in the house. Celebrities all over the place. Well, I'm so glad you guys are here. Mr. S'mores is in the house. Peter. Uh, the Rain's Ooh. in the house. So there, look at that. Those dinner. You want to know where dinner went? There it is. Yep. There, so it's And Dorothy's in the house. <laughs> so I'm excited. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, why don't we begin, ladies and gentlemen? And uh, we will get right into it. All right, Peter. Uh, for some reason, I've got you on. Uh, you're on live, and then you're also backstage. I don't know how that happened. Rain knows. Uh, Rain knows a, a bit about the apocrypha, apparently. I think, honestly, I. I don't think there's anything wrong with reading it. I, I'm just, it's it's different when you when you read it and when you compare it with the rest of the Bible. You can tell that 
it's different. That's all I got to say. It's different. And who are they written by? Uh, good question. We'll, we'll talk about that. Do you still think it's a good or not so good idea to read the Book of Enoch? Oh, that's that's not not something I would spend too much time on. Um, just knowing what I know, the little I know about it, I wouldn't spend too much time. No. I mean, I know I know people are all in, huh? It's heresy or what? Uh it, it's just uh, yeah. There's some really weird stuff, really weird stuff in that okay, Omar, i'm glad you yeah. warned me yeah i mean if you if you've got extra time on your hand then you know yeah but i, I wouldn't i wouldn't put too much sauce sauce on that one interesting yeah <laughs> I, but i know some people really like that stuff because it talks about angels it talks about pre-flood talks about a lot of you know fascinating stuff i mean it makes it good for i guess for i don't want to call it fiction but I, I, yeah i mean if you if you if you have nothing better to do then read it i just i don't you know I, I don't have time i don't i don't have time honestly i'm trying to get through the bible right now plus the apocrypha Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll learn, learn there first, the Apocrypha, before ever going, venturing off, you know? Yeah, I would, I would, the only reason I read the Apocrypha last year is because mm -hmm. I got, I got tired of asking questions, and I said, I, instead of asking questions, I'll just read it myself, because I would ask questions, and no one would answer me, so I just picked it up, I cracked it open, I started reading it, probably about my third day reading it, I said, oh, now I see why, no, why we stopped reading it. There's just some weird. You, you'll see. I, I don't. I don't want to spoil it for you. Just wait. Wait till we get to it. When we get to it, then you guys, because by that time we'd already have seven and a half months under our belt of the of reading Bible. And then when we get to the apocrypha, you'll just uh, you'll notice it's something. Like a bonus, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyhow, we, are we ready, Peter, for the prayer? I'm, I'm, re, I'm excited about the reading tonight. Mr. Bride, hello? Um, it's in transition. Rain is uh, typing. Uh, Thank you, Omar, for putting that list together of the good kings, the bad kings, and the ugly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here it is. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. One second. Dorothy. I mean, that's a nice thing to put together for us, you know? Yeah. Uh, Rain says, First Enoch is not heresy. It's part of the Ethiopian Bible. Second and third Enoch were taken as, or uh, we take as heresy, or second and third Enoch we take on heresy, or as I see as heresy. Yeah, the you know the first Enoch. I've watched I've watched a few videos about people who reviewed it, and it's not the same as me reading it. I mean, I probably sh should read it. It's just not something that I that I feel I I need right now in my life. But, you know, if you really like that kind of stuff about angels and Satan and Lucifer and what happened before the flood and all that kind of, you know, stuff and angels, because there are, like in the Apocrypha, what I thought was kind of cool is that it mentions a lot more angels than just Michael and Gabriel. You'll actually, I think you'll learn the name of about nine different angels. Some of them are pretty amazing. Uh, and it's it's in the apocrypha that we'll read this year. So, what's that angel in Ezekiel? Mm, well, there's only a couple mentioned in the Bible. Uh, yeah. Michael's one of them. Michael's one of them. And then you've got Gabriel. I don't know the names of any other ones in the standard Bible. That one with the weird wheels and the eyes and. I don't think he has that. a name. I, I don't think he has a name. 
I, he, no, he does have a name. Are you talking about the angel of the Lord, Peter? Is yeah. that what she's referring to? Okay, well, that's the, well. That's Jesus. That's Jesus, yeah. With the wheels and the eyes? Wow. Okay. Thank you for answering my questions. Uh-huh. Back okay. to, hold on, before before the yeah. prayer. Mm -hmm. What just happened? Omar. Yes, sir. Can you... Can you bring me in? Uh, I'm, I'm backstage. Can you bring me in? Uh, from on, the other, on, on the other on the other channel on the other. Okay, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just trying to figure all this out here. I got you guys on channel four. I'm, I'm, I'm put on channel seven. Dorothy, do, do, do. okay, hold on. So, ah, there it is. Window. Oh, I see. I see you. I, I, I see you, Peter. I see you here. No backstage, please. Yes, sir. One second. One second. Too many things open. I have too many. I have to close some of these. All right. One second. Hmm. All right. You're in. You're, you're in, in the, the house, house now. <laughs> Oh, we got two on. Awesome. Yeah, so I can hear me. We can hear you now. I got two empty screens. But I removed you on the other. Is it okay to me? remove you? For... Yeah, I can hear you. No picture. No picture, but we can hear you. Peter. We can't hear him. Dorothy, thank you for your patience, everyone. We're trying to get Mr. Peter on the. Hey, Omar, can you hear me? Yep. We can both hear you. Mark and I can hear you fine. I hear something in the background. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Omar, thank you. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be on listen only mode i'm gonna be on listen only mode this evening and so i just i'm not feeling well i'm having an allergic reaction oh i'm sorry about that we'll pray for you then yeah i'm just gonna be on listen only for okay the, yeah well let's pray for you and i hope that you feel better peter awesome yes sir All thank right. you so much no worries no worries so peter peter is on he's backstage mr rain uh thank you for the prayer i'll go ahead and pray and we'll pray we'll lift up peter in prayer mark how how are you doing fantastic no no issues uh over there can, can we pray for uh sunny any update on sunny sunny i haven't heard from I've, I've been leaving messages on his phone but he's on a out of the hospital he's somewhere in simi valley okay well let's go to the lord in prayer we'll get right into it and thank you peter for what a trooper. He's not feeling well and he's still connected. I like that. Talk kind about of cute, but don't, don't, don't tell him I said so. Talk about commitment, right? Yeah, really. All right, one second. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, guys. We'll pray for Thank you, Rain, for that. I see, I see your prayer. One second. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, we'll get started. We'll finish uh, first, first Kings tonight. Let's pray. <clears throat> Brother Rain shares a prayer. O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, the life and strength of all that put their hope in you, whose mercies are numberless and the treasury goodness that is infinite, we give thanks to you for the blessings which you have bestowed. And we humbly beseech you to continue your goodness toward us as you have been well pleased to restore us to our bodily health. So do imbue our souls with all the heavenly graces, perseverance, in good works, and prepare us by your blessings in this life for the enjoyment of eternal happiness in the life to come. For to you are due all glory, honor, and worship, as also to your eternal Father and your all-holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. One God, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Brother Rain. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. We can come together tonight, read your word. Please be with each person who's on tonight, I well, thank you for them, Father. Thank you for their faithfulness and encouragement. I pray tonight for Peter that he feel better and also for Dorothy 
Uh, thank you for Brother Mark and his faithfulness. I also pray for his friend Sonny as he recovers from his uh, health challenges. Pray for my sister Judy, Angel, her husband. Thank you for answering prayer, Lord. And uh, pray for my daughters who are on their way home from an activity. Please uh, be with them. Give them traveling mercies. I know they were having issues on the bus, the school bus. Pray for all the young people that are coming back. Uh, please protect, watch over them. I pray for the uh, bus driver and for those who are helping to, uh, to get the kids home tonight. Um, God, please give us wisdom now as we open up your word. May we see what it is that you want us to see. We thank you for it, Lord. Give us wisdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mr. S'mores in the house. There he is. So you you have uh, you got double duty tonight. You've got your you're on mute right now. You've got, got your both. your got ESV both, and yep. your King James. Okay. Yes. Sir. So are you? Do you have them side by side, or how yes. do you you just side by okay. side? Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay. So let's go ahead and load it up. And I do have the list that we should. Dorothy mentioned it, and I think it's important for all of us to to know about this uh this list here that we're we're referring to let's see if i can get it up on screen the um the list of the kings remember we talked about that yes sir uh I'm trying to see how i can oh i see i can do this okay hold on oh this might get a little a little weird let me see if i could do this hold on Last time I tried this, the computer went wacky. Okay, share screen. Let's see. There's Ricky, my ticky. How can I do this? No, it's not going to let me do it. I was going to, I'm trying to show. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know how to do it. Hold on. I want to show this, uh, this chart because it's going to help us understand what's going on here with these, uh, with all these kings. There he is. There's Mark. All right. Let me see if this works. It might not. It might not work. It might work. Hold on. Ricky, my ticky just showed up. Huh. What am I doing here? All right. Let's do this. All right. I know it's kind of it looks kind of weird right now. Just bear with me. Bear with me. I've got all kinds of stuff here. All right. Let me open this up. All right. So. You should see something on the screen now, Mark. I don't know if you can see a yellow. The good, the bad, the ugly? Yes. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So very important. We've got, we, we know that the first king of Israel was Saul. Then it was his son. Then it was David. David, who was his, technically his son-in-law. Uh, Saul was a bad king. David was a good king. Solomon, was the, is the, the son of David, was a good king as well. Of course, he dropped the ball towards the end, but he was a decent king. Then after Solomon, we have the split. The kingdom got divided, the kings of Judah on the one side and the kings of Israel on the other side. All the kings of Israel, without exception, were all wicked, all of them. And you can see there with the crown, the one, two, three, four, four-pointed crown, four-pointed crown. Let me blow it up a little bit. Four-pointed crown. You see that one, two, three, four little points on the crown? There's a, uh, or is it a five pointed? No, it's a, well, I guess it's four or five. I, anyhow, it's the spiky one. Not the, not the one that looks like a pineapple, but there you see Jeroboam, bad, Nadab, bad, Basha, bad, Elah, bad, Zimri, bad, Tibni, bad, Omri, really bad. Can you see that Omri, O-M-R-I? That's Ahab's dad. And then Ahab, he has that that weird type of crown right there. That he was really bad as well. Ahab. That's who, that's where we're at right now. So Omri was bad. Ahab was bad. And he Ahab was basically, as the Bible said, worse than all that came before him. And then after Ahab, we have Ahaziah, Jeram, Jehu, Jehu, Jeho, Jehoahaz, Joash, Jeroboam the second, not Jeroboam the first, Jeroboam the second. Uh, all the Jeroboams were bad, I think, right? Yeah, they were both, They were all bad. 
Jeroboam the second was bad. Zechariah, Shalom, Manahem, Pekiah, Pekah, and Hoshea. All the kings of Israel, bad. Can you see that now, Mark, a little bit? Yeah, I can see okay. them all. And then on the Judah side, the kings of Judah, we had Rehoboam was bad, Abijah was bad, Asa was good, Jehoshaphat was good, Joram was bad, Ahaziah was bad, Athaliah was really bad, like Ahab level bad, Joash was good, Amaziah was good, Uzziah was good, Jotham was good, Ahaz, not Ahab, Ahaz, very, very bad as well, uh, Hezekiah was good, even though Hezekiah dropped the ball towards the end of his life, but still, he was, he was good, Manasseh was really bad, Amon was really bad, Josiah was good, Jehoahaz was good, no, I'm sorry, Jehoahaz was bad, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim was really bad, Jehoiakim, sounds almost like Jehoiakim, there's a little confusion there, Jehoiakim was bad, and Zedekiah was bad. So I don't know if that helps, but it's just kind of good to know, just looking at this chart, at least the easy one to figure out all the kings of Israel were bad, and Ahab and his dad Omri were the, 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 the worst of the bunch. Okay, and then on the Judah side, you had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You had eight that I could see here, eight uh, good kings on Judah. I thought it was nine, but... Oh, well, if you count... Yeah, so eight. Looks like eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm counting eight. Anyhow, all right. So that's where we're at. Let me go back to... Let me stop the screen share. Sorry about that. Sorry about all the weird weirdness on the screen. I was just trying to... All right, let's begin. Let me go ahead and put the text on the screen. Yeah, a little bit of controversy tonight as we close this chapter, as we close this book. Okay, Mark, you ready to roll? Chapter 22. All right, let's do it. Chapter 22, Mark's going to be following along. Uh, we have the Geneva 1560 on the screen. Chapter 22, the last chapter of First Kings. Let's go ahead and read the intro. And Mark, I'm going to... If you need to say something, Mark, just... Uh, you're on mute right now, but I can, I can see you. So if you need to say something, just wave your hands or something. Anyhow, I'll ask you for help if I need something or if I need to get some some clarity. All right. Um, Ricky Tiki, God bless you. I'm glad you were able to get your, your computer issues straightened out. Here we go. The intro says, Jehoshaphat and Ahab fight against the king of Syria. Micaiah... I'm not exactly sure how to say his name. It's not Micah. It's spelled M-I-C-H-A-I-A-H. Micaiah. Or Micah. Micaiah. Micaiah. I have to listen to the Hebrew version of that. But anyhow, Micaiah. He's funny. There's a funny one there. He's a prophet, but... Oh, it's a funny story there. You, we'll, we'll, we'll get to him. So Micaiah showeth the king what shall be the... Will shall be the success of the enterprise. Zedekiah, the false prophet, smiteth him. Ahab is slain. Ahaziah, his son, succeedeth. The reign of Jehoshaphat and Joram, his son. Why do I get the feeling that this chapter is going to be like super, super, not not just complex, but like so many little subplots, you know, like a episode of 24. You know, you got so many things going on. But let's focus on it. Let's see what we can get out of it. Verse 1. All right. And they continued three years without war between Aram and Israel. And I know, Mark, that's Syria, uh, Aram. Um, Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, and Ahab made a peace 
which endured three years. And if you remember the last chapter, chapter 21 that we read last night, didn't you, did any of you think to ask, or after we read maybe, did you wonder, why is God helping Ahab? Because Ahab's a bad dude, right? And sound, as we read last night, I was thinking, wait a minute, why is God helping Ahab? I didn't understand that. But God was giving Ahab many opportunities to get right. And he was, uh, Ahab just didn't get it. He didn't get it. But God's grace shone through and he, he delivered him from, uh, from the, uh, the king of uh, Syria and uh, got some kind of peace treaty, it sounds like. So that's where we begin the chapter. And they continued three years without war between Aram and Israel. Aram is Syria. And in the third year did Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, come down to the king of Israel. Well, who's the king of Israel? Well, it's still Ahab. He came to see and visit him. Then the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye not that Ramoth Gilead was ours, and we stay and take it not out of the hand of the king of Aram, king of Syria? Verse 4. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle against Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, <laughs> unto the king of Israel, that's Ahab. Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and mine horses as thine horses. Then Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Ask counsel, I pray thee, of the Lord today. So he's saying, pray, pray to God. He wanted to make sure that God was was good with, with this plan. So Jehoshaphat tells Ahab, hey, why don't you pray first? Verse 6, then the king of Israel gathered. Instead of saying king of Israel, why didn't you just say Ahab? It'll be a lot easier, right? But anyhow, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets unto a 400 men, gathered the prophets upon then the king of Israel gathered the prophets upon a four hundredth men and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I let it alone? Wait a minute. Didn't he just did didn't Jehoshaphat just said to pray? No, he says, Ask counsel, I pray thee, of the Lord. Yeah, he said, Ask counsel of the Lord. Mark, I'm a little lost on this one. Hold on. Five and six. I'm gonna ask you if you can read five and six for us, please. I just want to get some clarity. Said, okay, five, and, and Josephat said to the king of Israel, inquire first for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, shall I go to battle against Ramoth, Gilead, or shall I refrain? And they said, go up, for the Lord will give it to, into the hand of the king. Yeah, I'm just a little confused there because... Jehoshaphat tells him, hey, ask counsel of the Lord, and and Ahab goes and gets these 400 men. And they're, Well, I guess they're, they're prophets, so maybe that's, it says, gathered the prophets upon a 400, so was it 400 prophets that he gathered? 400 men. It doesn't say 400 prophets. Does it say anything about prophets? In well, verse yeah, it says the king, king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. So they were prophets. Yeah, they were prophets. Okay, all right. So so let's let's give him a point on that. So, okay, he's going to the prophets, and that's how God used to talk to, to people, through the prophets. Okay, let's run with that. Thank you, Mark. I got it. Got it. Thank you very much. All right, so... I just want to make sure we don't mess this up. I mean, as I'm reading it, I want to get the real essence of what's going down here. Okay, so, verse 5 again. Then Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Ask counsel, I pray thee, of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets upon a 400 men, so approximately 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, comma, or shall I let it alone? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hands of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, is there here never a prophet of the Lord more that we might inquire of him? 
Uh, let's see here. There's a note here. Jehoshaphat did not acknowledge the false prophets to be God's ministers, but did contemn them. Oh, so Jehoshaphat did not acknowledge those 400, it seems like. Let's keep reading, but I think I get what's going on. Jehoshaphat's asking him in verse 7, hey, isn't there a prophet near us that we can ask instead of, you know, you asking all these 400? So that Jehoshaphat didn't believe that they were that they were good prophets. They were false prophets at that time as well. We're going to hear about that in a minute. Okay, so Jehoshaphat said, Is there here never a prophet of the Lord more that we might inquire of him? Verse 8, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, this is the funny part, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. <laughs> Ahab says, I don't like that guy, though. Every time I ask him to speak to me of the Lord, he always gives me bad news. So that's, what, that's what's about to go down. So, and the king of Israel, Ahab, said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may ask counsel of the Lord. But I hate him. That's what it says. Look, I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good unto me, but evil. <laughs> Comic, right? I mean, it's funny. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an eunuch and said a eunuch is a some kind of servant typically a castrated male uh that's what eunuchs were i mean sometimes they were born born a certain way but eunuchs usually were servants uh that were uh looked at as not a, not as much of a threat I couldn't uh, take your wives. You know, if you had a lot of wives, you didn't have to worry about him, them ha being near the eunuch. Uh, you didn't have to worry about rebellion because eunuchs were a little less, uh, you know, a little less testosterone, that kind of stuff. So anyhow, the king of Israel called an eunuch and said, call quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. Verse 10, and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne in their apparel in the void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Are those those 400 that we we saw earlier? Mark, and if any of this is off, just let me know. Okay, because I, I can see you. I can't hear you, but I can see you. Um, let's keep reading. So verse, we're at verse 11. And Zedekiah, the son of... Verse 11, and Zedekiah, not Zedekiah, Zedekiah, Z-I-D-K-I-I-A-H, Zedekiah, the son of Kenarah, made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these shalt thou push the Aramites, or the Syrians, until thou hast consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now the words of the prophets. The words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one accord. So they're also, hey, all the other prophets told Ahab that everything's going to be good. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak thou good. So, so <laughs> they're asking Micaiah, hey, Micaiah, look, all the other prophets said this. Can you just agree with them, you know, and say the same thing? So so King Ahab will, will chill out. And look what Micaiah says in verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, whatsoever the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Amen to that. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we leave off? And he answered him, Go up and prosper, and the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How oft shall I charge thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Then he said, Hold on a second. I think verse 16, Ahab is, he doesn't believe, he doesn't believe uh, what Micaiah is saying. And, uh, let, let's read that carefully. And the king said unto him, How oft shall I charge thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I think this is Micaiah, I saw all Israel scattered upon the mountains as the sheep that had no shepherd. 
And the Lord said, These have no master. Let every man return unto his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good unto me but evil? So I think in verse 16, 17, and 18, King Ahab figured out that Micaiah was was not in agreement with the other prophets that said that he was going to prosper. They both can't be right. If the other prophets said that King, King Ahab's going to prosper, King Ahab slash Israel is going to prosper, and Micaiah says that they're all going to be scattered, basically not they're not going to be victorious, they both can't be right. Someone's lying. Let's say it, Mark, uh, what's your take on this so far? Uh, just uh, out of curiosity, I know you're following along on the ESV. Well, it's same. It's it's same thing. It's not too far off. What did, what did King Ahab say to Micaiah in verse 16? But the king said to him, How many times shall I make you swear that you speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And then in verse 17, that's uh, I believe that's Micaiah's response. What does Micaiah and say he, to Ahab? And he said, I, he, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that had no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his home in peace. Okay, go ahead and close it out in verse 18. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Okay. All right. So I think we're, we're all on the same page. I think we're all good. All right, thank you, Mark. Let's go back. Thank you. Verse 19. Okay. Again, he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. So this is obviously Micaiah, if he's going to reveal what, the God, what God said. Again, he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sit on his throne, and all the host of heaven stood about him on his right hand and on his left hand. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, that he may go and fall at Ramoth-Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. Then there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, the spirit said, I will go out and be a false spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, Thou shalt entice him, and shall also prevail. Go forth and do so. So God is going to allow this false spirit to go and do whatever it's doing to throw Ahab off, the king of Israel, off. Verse 23. I told you it was a controversial chapter, right? Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets, now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all the, these thy of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath appointed evil against thee. And this is a whole Bible study in itself, right? Why did God allow the prophets to to basically throw Ahab off track? I was I was studying this and I God had a purpose for this obviously and there is history between him between God and Ahab Ahab just obviously just a you know wicked wicked king he lived a wicked life um obviously marrying Jezebel uh God had given him ample opportunities to get right and Ahab he just kept going back to his old ways I think God helped Ahab the last chapter against the uh, the Syrians to show Ahab that he's he's still in control. God is still in control because remember they were saying, "Oh, we can beat them if they're in the valleys. We can't beat them when they're in the mountains." And God said, "No, I, well, I'll let you have victory in the valley as well as on the mountains." Anyhow, so let's keep reading. But yeah, there's a little little bit of a study here. Obviously, we're not gonna have time to to get into it too much but it is it is a good topic but god knows what he's doing and he had a purpose for all of this verse 23 now therefore behold the lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets and the lord hath appointed evil against thee then zedekiah the son of kenah 
came near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, When went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Oh, that's a good one. Zedekiah comes and slaps Micaiah and says, Hey, how come you have, when did the Spirit of, of the Lord or the Spirit of truth leave from me and go to you? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go from chamber to chamber to hide thee. Okay. I need your help, Mark, on this one. Um, why don't you go 24 and 25? Let's, let's see what the ESV says on this one, 24 and 25. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chenah, came near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, How did the Spirit of the Lord go from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber and hide yourself. So he's going into some chamber. Hold on a second. One second, guys. So I told you there's a lot of moving parts in this uh, in this chapter. <laughs> okay, hold on. You've got the prophets. You've got the lying spirits. you got Micaiah telling the truth, but nobody likes him because he tells the truth. Okay, hold on a second. That was verse 25, right? 24 and 25. One second. Mm, I got it. Okay, so I'm just going to... Uh, let me let me paraphrase this, and I'm, I'm going to the NIV real quick just, just to get a, a second or a third opinion here of, of what, what's going down. Um. Micah, Micah says in verse 17, or Micaiah, I'm sorry, Micaiah. I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, these people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. Verse 18, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you that he never prophesied anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, verse 19, therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked, verse 22. I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it, verse 23. So I understood all that so far, verse 23. Now, so now the Lord hath put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours. So they're Ahab's prophets. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, the son of Kenana, or Kenana, went up and slapped Micah in the face. This is where we're at. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? He asked. Ah, I didn't see that. Which way did the Spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? He asked. Verse 25, Micaiah replied, You will find out on the day you go to hide in an inner room. Verse 26, the king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Amon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, This is what the king says, Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. <laughs> put him on a restricted diet. What did he do? He did nothing wrong, just to tell the truth. Micaiah declared, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Ooh, oh, wow. Wow, Micaiah, that is cold in verse 28. We'll read that in the in the Geneva in a second. Micaiah declared, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, mark my words, all you people. Ahab is now killed in the next verse. Wow. Okay, Mark, so I, did that help a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. I told you there's a lot of moving parts in this chapter, man. All right, guys, let's go back. This is the end of a book, too, so I wanted to make sure we you know, we get a little bit of clarity here. Okay, so let's go to... Uh, thank you, Mark. Let me go back to the uh, Geneva. Okay.
now I'll be able to understand it when, when I read it. So verse 24, where we were, then Zedekiah, the son of Kenana, came near and smote or slapped Micah on the cheek, Micaiah on the cheek, and said, when, or it should say where, but it says when, went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee. Oh, uh, I didn't ask you, Mark, what does the King James say in verse 24? The King James, I didn't ask you about that. What does the King James, King James read in verse 24? In the King James says, Zedekiah, the son of Chana, went Chana. near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way went the Spirit of the there Lord? There it is. Much clearer. Much, much clearer in the King James. Which, which way did the Spirit of the Lord from me to you unto thee? Can we give the King James a point on that one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because over here... Well, yes, he said, how, how did the Spirit of the Lord yeah, go no, from no, me King, to speak King, to you? King James, that's the one. Which way? So that, that's, that's what went down. So anyhow, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. All right, so verse 24. Uh, then Zedekiah, the son of Canaanah, came near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, When went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah, Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go from chamber to chamber to hide thee. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him unto Ammon the governor of the city and unto Joash the king's son and say, Thus saith the king, thus says Tell him that I said it, me Ahab. Put this man in the prison house and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. So it didn't really say feed him with bread and water. I think that's a, let me see, bread of affliction. Let's see what the Geneva translators left for us. Hold on. They left us notes here. Bread of affliction. T, letter T, letter T. Hold on. Oh, man. Oh, there it is, letter T. Let him be pinned away with hunger. There it is, with hunger, and be fed with small portion of bread and water. Okay. So basically, put this guy on a, on a food restriction. Bare minimum until I get back safely. That's what Ahab says. So let's go back. And the king of Israel, verse 26, the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and unto Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this man in the prison house and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, This is a low blow. Micaiah said, If you return, if thou, if thou return in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. <laughs> and he said, Hearken all you people. So Micaiah says, Listen, everyone. Wow. Wow, the, the, the Geneva translators put here that uh, by making that statement, Micaiah is saying that, you, that when you shall see these things come to pass, ye may give God the glory and know that I am his true prophet. Very good. Thank you, Geneva translators. All right. So, Verse 27 again, and say, thus saith the king, put this man in prison, in the prison house, feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou return in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, hearken all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. Verse 30. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will change. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> how foolish uh i think ahab figured out that he's probably going to die in this battle because of the prophecy that micaiah said and uh, and he says hey uh hey uh jehoshaphat can we do something real quick can you give me your clothes and i give you my clothes and we just kind of swap before we go to battle i mean that's how foolish people are when they're they're not they're not in their right minds okay i mean they're obviously ahab had his own plan he didn't trust god he tried to figure out things on his own and he's just uh 
Anyhow, so this is where we're at. Verse 30, And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will change mine apparel and will enter into the battle and put thou on thine apparel. And the king of Israel changed himself and went into the battle. And the king of Aram, or Syria, commanded his two and thirty captains over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only against the king of Israel. So they're saying, hey, don't worry about anyone else. Our target is Ahab, king of Israel. Verse 32, And when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. It looked like him. And they turned to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried. And when the captains of the chariots saw that he was not the king of Israel, he wasn't Ahab, they turned back from him. Then a certain man drew a bow mightily. So just a random arrow drew a bow mightily and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his brigadine. Wherefore he said unto his chariot man, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am hurt. So this random arrow, Mark, how do you have uh, verse 34? Uh, what's your reading on verse 34? But a certain man drew his bow at random and struck at random and struck the king of Israel between the scale armor and the breastplate. Therefore he said to him, said to the, said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and carry me out of the battle. For I am wounded. Yeah, so it's over. Game over. Random arrow. Well, no, it's not. Nothing's random with God. Nothing's random with God. Okay. Mark, you're on with me. You can always unmute yourself if you need to. Okay, verse 35. Um, and the battle increased that day, and the king, the king is that, uh, yeah, that has to be Ahab. Yeah, the king, Ahab, stood still in his chariot against the Aramites, or the Syrians, and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And there was a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died, Ahab died, and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked licked up his blood and they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord which he spake that's a prophecy right there God prophesied that that would happen exactly as God said it was going to happen it happened verse 39 concerning the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did and the and the ivory house which he built and all the cities that he built are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel so Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign upon Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Verse 42. Jehoshaphat was five and thirty years old when he began to reign, and reigned five and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shalhai. And he walked, and he, who's he, Jehoshaphat, walked in all the ways of Asa his father, and declined not therefrom, but did that which, is, which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places, or where they worshipped pagans, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered still and burnt incense in the high places. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel, Ahab, Concerning the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his worthy deeds that he did and his battles which he fought, are they not written in the book of the, the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the Sodomites which remained in the days of his father Asa, he put clean out of the land. Amen to that. Verse 47. There was then no king in Edom. The deputy was king. In the time of this, the king... The king was subject to Judah and was governed by whom they of Judah appointed. So what was it like a kind of like a mock government there? What did they do? I don't know. There was no king in Edom. The deputy was king. Verse 48, Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to sail to Ophir for gold, but they went not for the ships were broken at Ezra Geber. Then said Ahaziah the son of Ahab, 
unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat did sleep with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Of course, David's not his father, but you know what it means. It's, you know, his, his great, 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 right? David generation. So Jehoshaphat did sleep with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father, and Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the seventh year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother, Jezebel, and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which is Jeroboam the first, by the way, which made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked the Lord, of, the Lord God of Israel unto wrath, according to all that his father had done. And that closes out First Kings. Congratulations. Pretty exciting book. Mark, uh, any anything different? You see any any issues as we finish? No, that, uh... no, not really. I okay. bet you this this chapter will be different. Well, now it's uh, Elijah is going to basically get uh, sucked up into into a whirlwind, and Elisha comes into the picture. So Elisha. All right, let's go ahead and read the intro. Thank you, Mark. Second Kings, everyone, congratulations. We made it. Second Kings. All right. The second book, this second book, contains the acts of the kings of Judah and Israel, to wit, of Israel, from the death of Ahab until the last king, Hosea, who was imprisoned by the king of Assyria and his city, Samaria, taken. And the ten tribes, by the just plague of God for their idolatry and disobedience to God, led into captivity. And also of Judah, from the reign of Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, unto Zedekiah, who for contemning the Lord's commandment by his prophets and neglecting his sundry admonitions, by famine and other means was taken by his enemies, saw his sons most cruelly slain before his face, and his own eyes put out, as the Lord had declared to him before by the prophet Jeremiah. And that's Nebuchadnezzar who did that, by the way. De Nebuchadnezzar was a really evil guy. Uh, and also by the just vengeance of God for contempt of his word, Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple burnt, and the temple burnt, the Babylonians destroyed it, and uh, one second. And all his people were led away captive into Babylon. There it is. In this book are notable examples of God's favor toward those rulers and people which obey his prophets and embrace his word, and contrary wise of his plagues toward those common wheels which neglect his ministers, and do not obey his commandments. Okay. Chapter 1. Note here, it says, Ahaziah by a fall. Ahaziah by a fall falleth sick and consulteth with Baalzebub, or Beelzebub. He is reproved by Elijah, the captains over fifty, were sent to Elijah, whereof two were burnt with fire from heaven by his prayer. Abaziah, or Ahaziah, dieth, and Jehoram, his brother, succeedeth him. Verse 1. 2 Kings, verse 1. All right. One second. There it is. <clears throat> then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell through the lattice window in his upper chamber, which was in Samaria. So he was sick. Well, I think that word means injured. I mean, you fall through a lattice window, and anyhow, he he was he was permanent. It looks like he was permanently injured. 
Then he sent messengers to whom he said, Go and inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, if I shall recover of this my disease. Are you serious? You go to some pagan god to see if you're going to get cured from your, uh, from your fall? What is this guy thinking? The Philistines, which dwelt at Ekron, worshipped this idol, which signifieth the god of flies thinking that he could preserve them from the biting of flies, or else he was so called because flies were engendered in great abundance of the blood of the sacrifices that were offered to that idol. Interesting. Gives a new term to Lord of the Flies, right? So, anyhow... He goes and asks this God, the God of Ekron, if I shall recover of this my disease. Verse 3, Then the angel of the Lord, capital A, said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise and go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto him, Is it not because there is no God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Wherefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from the bed, on which thou art gone up, but shall die the death. So Elijah departed. So basically he said, because of what you did, you're never going to recover. You're going to die on that bed. Verse 5, And the messengers returned unto him, to whom he said, Why are ye now returned? And the messengers returned unto him, to whom he said, Why are ye now returned? Question mark. And they answered him, There came a man and met us, and said unto us, Go and return unto the king which sent you. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Oh, I get it. He sent the messengers to go talk to this Beelzebub God or whatever. And they, those men went and God told them, you know, well, basically, no, he's not going to get cured. He's going to die on his bed. So in verse 6, they answered him, There came a man and met us and said unto us, Go and return unto the king which sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is no God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from the bed on which thou art gone up, but shall die the death. So they gave him the exact message, what God said. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came and met you and told you these words? He wants to know, Who told you this? Who was the guy? And they said unto him, He was an hairy man, and girded with a girdle of leather and about his loins. Then said he, it is Elijah the Tishbite. I guess Elijah was a hairy guy. Therefore the king sent unto him a captain over 50 and his 50 men, with his 50 men, who went up unto him. For behold, he sat on the top of a mountain and said unto him, O man of God, the king hath commanded that thou come down. So the, so the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50 men, who went up to him. For behold, he... Who's he? Elijah. Okay. It, it, you see, when you read it, the he and his, you have to wonder, like, okay, who is it? Obviously, it's Elijah. So he sat on the top of a mountain and said unto, unto him, and he said unto him, O man of God, the king hath commanded that thou come down. So there we have another clue. He said, come down. How could, you, how could you come down? He was up on the mountain. So Elijah's up there. They're saying, can, the king's requesting you come down. But Elijah answered and said to the captain of the 50, if that I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and devour thee and thy 50. <laughs> what? Elijah says, if I, okay, you guys call me a man of God. If I am the man of God, okay, may fire come down from heaven and burn you alive. Let's see what happens. This is funny. This is really funny. I, I Well, it's not funny because these guys are getting wiped out. But you'll see something here, Mark. I'm glad I wasn't, I wasn't on, on payroll on this one. Watch this. But Elijah answered and said to the captains over the 50, If that I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and devour thee and thy 50. So fire came down from the heaven and devoured him and his 50. <laughs> Verse 11. Again also... He sent unto him another captain over fifty, so a second squad with his fifty, who spake and said unto him, O man of God, thus the king commandeth, come down quickly. But Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, 
let fire come down from heaven and devour thee and thy fifty. So fire came down from the heaven and devoured him and his fifty. Third time, yet again he sent the third captain over fifty with his fifty. And the third captain over fifty went, went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life... Good smart man, okay, he heard obviously the first, what happened to the first two. He says to them, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these thy fifty servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from the heaven and devoured the two former captains over fifty with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him. Be not afraid of his presence. So he arose and went down with him into the king. That'd be an interesting study there to do the angel of the Lord. What does that say in Hebrew? Peter always thinks that's Jesus. I, th I think that could be the angel of the Lord. I'm not sure. I'd like to look at the Hebrew on that one. Anytime it says angel of the Lord, though, yeah, it's definitely, it would be a really cool study to do. Uh, anyhow, uh, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, Elijah, go down with him. Be not afraid of his presence. So he arose and went down with him unto the king. Finally comes down, right? Verse 16, and he said unto him, thus saith the Lord, because thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, or ba ba Baalzebub, the god of Ekron. Was it not because there was no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off the bed on which thou art gone up, but shall die the death. I think he was injured. I think maybe he was paralyzed. I think maybe he was paralyzed because he fell through that window lattice and he wanted to know, hey, am I going to get healed? And he, first, and he goes to this Beelzebub guy or whatever to, to see if he's going to get healed. Uh, it's an equivalent of you going to a, to a fortune teller or a psychic and asking if you're going to get back with your spouse, okay? <laughs> I mean, like that, you pretty much just sealed your own death right there. I mean, that's, that's how ridiculous and how foolish it is to go seek counsel from non-godly sources. It never turns out good, never. Ever, ever, ever. Verse 17. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. So he died right there. He died. He died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram began to reign in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Verse 18. Concerning the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Man, what an exciting start to this book, Second Kings. Mark, let me get some feedback from you. I know you're reading uh, from the ESV. Any fee any feedback? No, it's pretty pretty right on. Crazy it's stuff, though, right? Amazing, yeah, amazingly very similar. No, no differences at all. It's well, the same group of people that did the translation. I'm looking at my handy chart. I won't show you guys because it's too much work for me to try to get it on screen here it's, it's too small but it's the same yellow one i'm just looking here on the chart so we have jehoshaphat so it was it was rehoboam abijah asa jehoshaphat jehoram so jehoram's next jehoram's next and then on the israel side Jeroboam, Nadab, Basha, Elah, Zimri, Tibnus, Ahab, who was after Ahab? Ahaziah. Ahaziah and then Joram. I'm just trying to get an idea of, you know, because kings die, obviously. You know, one lives, one dies, one lives, one dies, and you're trying to figure out, okay, who's alive during these stories? And it does give us some, some approximate dates on this chart. It's actually not a bad chart. I don't know where I found this, but it's a, it's a pretty good chart. Okay, so... I think on the Israel side, we're at Ahaziah, who's currently in reign. And uh, and on the Judah side, I want to say we're at Jehoram, about 853 B.C. That sounds about right. All right. There's like a way I can post this or, or just put it somewhere so everyone can see it or get, have access to it. Okay, hold on. Okay, ready, Mark, for chapter 2, 2 Kings chapter 2? Yes, sir. Okay, this is our last chapter for the night, guys. How many verses here? 25. 25, short. Okay, perfect. One second. 2 Kings. Elijah, 
divideth the waters with his cloak. He is taken up into heaven. Elisha, with an S, taketh his cloak and divideth Jordan. The bitter and venomous waters are healed. The children that mock Elisha are rent in pieces with bears. Oh, that's funny. I mean, it's not funny, but they call Elisha a bald-headed dude. It's like, you bald-headed man. And Elisha says, what did you call me? And then, well, I'm ruining the story for you. You'll, you'll see it here. Verse 1. And when the Lord would... And when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Which, uh, by the way, Gilgal was a place where the children of Israel were circumcised after they came over Jordan and had been 40 years in the wilderness. So that's where Gilgal, I guess that's what it was known for. Verse 2, Then Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, wait, he says, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came down to Bethel, and verse 3, And the children of the prophets that were at Bethel came out to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take thy master from thine head this day? So, and the children of the prophets, let me see, what does that say? So called because they are begotten, as it were, anew by the heavenly doctrine. What does that mean? The notes here, the Geneva translator said that the children of the prophets are called children of the prophets because they are begotten, as it were, anew by the heavenly doctrine. What does that mean? They were saved, born again? Huh. I don't know what's going on there, Mark, in verse 3. Hold on. Mark, can you read um, verse 3 for us, please? <clears throat> and the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Hmm. I'll look at that. Let me get back to you guys on that. It's interesting. The children of the prophets. I'll study that a little bit. All right. Thank you, Mark. Verse 4. Verse 4. And that's Elisha. Again, verse 4. Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Elisha didn't want to leave Elijah's side. And the children of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take thy master from thine head this day? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. So same exact. Hmm. Huh, interesting. Same exact things going on here. Verse 6. Moreover, Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went both together. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood on the other side afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and wrapped it together and smote the waters and were divided hither and thither and they were divided hither and thither is the parting of the waters again almost like Moses right and they twain went over the over on the dry land wow interesting this is like a second uh, Red Sea episode now verse 9 now when they were passed over Elijah said unto Elisha ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken from thee so Elijah knew he was going to be taken and he says hey Elisha before I go any special requests? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let thy spirit be double upon me. So Elisha said, whatever God has blessed you with, I want double, a double portion. Letter G says, uh, I'm sorry, the side note here says, let thy spirit have double force in me because of these dangerous times, or let me have twice so much as the rest of the prophets, or thy spirit being divided into three parts, let me have two. That's the notes here. So I don't know what the Geneva translators meant by that, but 
the the point is Elisha asked for a double portion of uh of of the anointing that Elijah had verse 10 and he said thou hast asked an hard thing that's a difficult that's a difficult request yet if thou see me when i am taken from thee thou shalt have it so and if not it shall not be so Elijah says if you're present when i am taken away from you then you can have your request but if you don't see me then you can't have it verse 11 and as they went walking and talking behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire that movie Chariots of Fire is so good, by the way. It has nothing to do with this scene. But man, if you want a good, uplifting movie, watch Chariots of Fire. It's an awesome, awesome movie. I'm sure they got the quote, probably the name of the movie from this, this part of the Bible. And as they w went walking and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and did separate them twain. So Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. There's a note here. God, by this, has left a testimony in all ages, both before the law and in the law and in the time of the gospel of the resurrection. Wow, very cool. Okay. Elijah saw it and cried. Hold on one second. Okay, so Elijah goes up by a whirlwind into heaven, verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Or no, the, the, ch the chariot, yeah, I think it's chariot, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen, that, yeah, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the cloak of Elijah that fell from him and returned and stood by the bank of Jordan. After he took the cloak of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah and he himself? Again also he smote the waters and they were separated this way and that way and Elijah went over. And when the children of the prophets which were at Jericho saw him on the other side, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and fell to the ground before him. Verse 16, and, they, and said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. If so be, the Spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. But he said, Ye shall not send. What are they saying? Are they trying to find, do they think some tornado whisked Elijah away and they're going to go find him on a mountain? Is that what is verse 16 says, Mark? Hold on. What, what do you have in verse 16? And they said to him, Behold, now there are uh, there are with your servants 50 strong men. Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the Spirit of the Lord has caught him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send. I mean, he's. I think he's saying, "Don't wait. Don't bother. Don't waste he's your not, time." Yeah, don't waste your time. He's not. He's gone. He's in heaven. He's out. I think Elisha knew exactly that he. You know, Elijah's gone. Wow. Okay, verse seventeen. One second. Thank you, Mark. All right, chapter seventeen. I'm sorry, verse seventeen. Uh, yet they were instant upon him, so they kept saying, "Come on, come on, let's go, let's look for him." Till he was ashamed, wherefore he said, "Send." Okay, go. So they sent 50 men, which sought three days, but found them not. So it's like an SOS. Let's go see who finds Elijah. You're not going to find him. So three days. That's interesting. Three days. What's up with three days? Who else was disappeared for three days or maybe put away for three days? Verse 18. Therefore they returned to him, for he tarried at Jericho. And he said unto them, did not I say unto you, go not? Didn't I tell you guys, don't waste your time? Verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, we pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as thou, my Lord, seest, but the water is not, and the ground barren. Then he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went, verse 21, He went into the spring of the waters, and cast there, cast there the salt, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed this water, death shall no more come thereof, neither barrenness to the ground so the waters were healed until this day according to the word of elisha which he had spoken verse 23 
and he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up the way, little children came out of the city and mocked him, and said unto him, Come up, thou bald head, come up, thou bald head. <laughs> Verse 20, I told you it was funny. And he turned back and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Now when he cursed them, perceiving their malicious heart against the Lord and his word, he desireth God to take vengeance of that injustice done unto him. Verse 24 says, he turned back and looked on them. Man, if looks could kill, well, they're about to. Looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two bears came out of the forest. Wow, oh, what a coincidence. Talk about timing, right? Don't mess with God's man. Two bears came out of the forest and tear in pieces. Not one, not two, but 42 kids. Children. Two bears. Verse 25, so he went from thence to Mount Carmel. And from thence he returned to Samaria. Man, this could be like a Hollywood movie here. Just the first two chapters. Tomorrow will continue. What did you get, Mark? Nice. <laughs> God, two wow. bears. Wow. Yeah, right? Crazy stuff. Crazy <laughs> stuff tonight. Well, Peter, I hope you feel better. I, I, I don't see he's on. I don't see him on online anymore. I hope he's okay. He probably ate something bad. What did he say? He had a, he, he said he had an allergic reaction or something like that? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Maybe what he was? had too, too many beans. I mean, I don't definitely know. Not, definitely not allergic to peach cobbler, that's for sure. Told you those Dorothy, bag meals have too much rest. There's a grease. Dor Dorothy will take care of them, though. I'm yeah, glad I'm glad grease. she's I'm glad I'm glad she's there with them. Too much grease. <laughs> okay. Well, Peter, there he is. He's uh, he's with it's us in North spirit. Wind. He's there, he's North with us in spirit. So protect. Peter, stay away from that fast food, okay? Yeah. She says, be, Are you Peter, are you sick? Yeah. He'll be he'll be you fine. Don't, you don't want to eat more of this stuff. He'll be fine. All right. All right, Mr. S'mores. Well, we went a little over tonight, but I, hey, listen, we finished one book. We got into the first two chapters of the next book. And uh, I do have some good news for uh, all of you, all of us. So April, we're today is April 11th, right? Today's April 11th. All day. So we will uh, finish Second Kings by April 20th. So that'll be pretty quick. And then we'll start in First Chronicles on April 20th as well. And we will close out the month of April finishing not only First Kings, not only Second Kings, but we'll also finish First Chronicles. So it is going to be really, really accelerated. You'll see. And then May is May is going to be pretty much, man, oh, yeah, May. I, I love May because we're going to get into uh, Job. So we're already, you guys can see how fast we're making progress. And uh, for those of you who are wondering about the Apocrypha, when we'll get to that, um, sometime around the end of summer, we'll get to the Apocrypha. It'll be the first time for many, many, many people I know reading, reading these books. Ezra's, Tobit, Judith, the extra chapter of Esther. Yeah, so these are these are Bell and the Dragon. I like that. I read Bell and the Dragon. It talks about uh, Daniel. Um, some of these books, some of them are weird. I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil it for you. But when, when you when we get to them, you'll understand why people don't acknowledge these as scripture. There, um, there's some weird stuff. There's no, and by the way, uh, the, what led me to read the Geneva 1560, for those of you, I, I don't know if I've ever told you guys, the whole reason for me starting to read the Geneva Bible wasn't because I wasn't happy with my King James Bible. I love my King James Bible. But I heard so many people saying, oh man, the Bible's been changed because King James this, and he didn't want the people to blah, 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 blah. You know, just people talking all kinds of, you know, people get bored. They make YouTube videos, conspiracy videos, and blah, 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 blah. So I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and pick up the Geneva. And I fell in love with the Geneva. I'm like, man, this is a beautiful book. Look at all these notes. Look at all this, you know, the the feistiness of the guys who, you know, the Geneva guys, they were... 
They didn't care. They were like, hey, man, we don't care what the king says. We're going to write. We're going to put this thing together. This is God's word. And so they kind of, you know, they were pretty brave for doing what they did. And obviously, you know, after Tyndale got burned at the stake, man, I'm sure a lot of people had second thoughts about, you know, taking a stand against the establishment. But anyhow, the Geneva translation and the King James, they're about 95% similar, maybe more. So there's no, there's no conspiracy. And uh, if I had to go pound for pound, which one was is more um, reliable or trustworthy? I would, I would definitely say the King James. But, but the Geneva does have some awesome stuff to it, like these notes. So, anyhow, that's just my two cents on it, guys. Uh, why, why read the apocrypha? Because so many people talk about it, or you know, have their ideas or theories about how, oh, man, people want those taken out because it has real stuff in it that they're, they don't, they, they don't want us to know. Um, just wait till we read it and then, then you give your opinion. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Mark, I think it'll be your first time reading it, right? Never read it before. Never heard yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 So just, yeah. Well, when you read it, then I'll, I'd like to get your, your guys' feedback on it. See what you guys thought about it. All right, well, let's pray. Rain's got a prayer for us. Thank you, Brother Rain. Awesome, let's pray. It's good to see everyone tonight. God bless you guys. It's 1130 on the West Coast. I know it's late, but let's pray. I think we we had a good read tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you so much. Give us sweet rest tonight. Uh, I just enjoy um, finishing my day with you on my heart, on my mind. Uh, just all the stuff that's thrown at us throughout the day, Lord, it can be heavy sometimes. But uh, I can think of no better way to finish today than with your word. I pray, God, that you give us wisdom. May we learn from the things that we read. I know there's a lesson in everything. There's a, There's always something to be gleaned from your word. I thank you for Mark and Peter. I pray for Peter. Give him strength, Lord. I pray for all those who are on tonight. Bring us back again tomorrow. Brother Rain shares a prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, O God of every merciful kindness and compassion, whose mercy is without measure and whose love for mankind is an unfathomable deep, falling down before thy greatness with fear and trembling as unworthy servants and humbly rendering thanksgiving unto thy loving kindness for thy benefits bestowed upon us, we glorify, praise him, and magnify thee as Lord, Master, and Benefactor. And falling down again, we thank thee. We humbly pray to thy ineffable, merciful kindness, as thou hast now accepted and fulfilled our supplications. So also grant that henceforth we may increase in true love of thee and in all virtues, that we may ever offer thanksgiving unto thee and glorify thee together with thine unoriginate Father and thy most holy and good and consubstantial spirit. Unto the ages of ages, one God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Wow. All right. Thank you, Brother Rain. Beautiful prayer. Let Mark know that the Orthodox Christians take those books as canon, but second authority to the 66 books. Interesting. I was trying to find a quote from Martin Luther. I couldn't find it for you guys. I'll, I'll keep looking. But Martin Luther said basically this, that he thinks the Apocrypha is a uh, is good study. He thought that it was a good study and it is it is of profit. But uh, he, he said he wouldn't he wouldn't necessarily call it scripture. I'm paraphrasing. I'll try to find Martin Luther's quote. If you guys can find it, let me know. But that was Martin Luther's uh take on the apocrypha he said it's good for study but that's about it anyhow i'll see if i can find the quote all right mr s'mores uh what's for dinner what was for dinner what was for, what was for dinner mr s'mores oh uh, you want the rundown i had good i had tuna avocado tomato onion cilantro cucumber garlic healthy stuff Oh, it was delicious. Man, okay, okay. Miss, I love I like that. I like that. Well, they, you save those calories for when it counts, right? 
Absolutely. Amen. Well, hopefully tomorrow Peter will be back with us, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll have a pretty good month this month. We'll get a lot done. So appreciate everyone. And uh, Ricky Ticky, thank you for being on. Rain, uh, Judy, Crypto, Michaela or Mickey Lee. Who else? Who else? Who else? I didn't see. I haven't, seen Brand Judy Brown. I haven't seen Brandon in a while. I hope he's okay. Salt Pie. I haven't seen Salt Pie in a while. I hope she's doing okay. A few people, you wonder, like, what happens? We got a guy from uh, UK that came on to our reading uh, this morning. Really? Yeah, he's a guy. He's like half half uh, Hungarian, half Iraqi, but he speaks fluent Hebrew. He uh, he just gave his life to the Lord. He's he's a he's on, he's a Christian on fire. His name is Jacob. Nice guy, Jacob. So I mean, truth right back. We're getting people. I mean, we're 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 reaching all over the world, and praise Fantastic. the Lord for that. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that, Mark. Fantastic. Yeah, you're gonna have to wear sunglasses now when you go out into the public, okay, Mr. S'mores? That's right. I'm not gonna be. They're not gonna recognize me anyway. All right, guys. Hey, man. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a beautiful night, everybody. All right, good night, everybody.